here. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay, ba kayo dyan? Can you chat? If you're here. Ayan, pa-share din po ng live para mapanood din po ng iba at sabay-sabay po tayong pumasa. Oh, hello. Ayan. Share din po natin. Pakishare na lang din po sa iba. So we could start. So this will be linguistics po, part one, dahil napakahaba ng linguistics and hopefully madiscuss lahat before September. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jen. <laughs> yes. So, ayan, hopefully okay po kayong lahat ngayon. Um, pinagandaan ko po talaga tong topic na to because this is very important. Madalas siyang lumalabas dun sa mga nakaraang board exam. Yung iba dito, meron nung March 2023 let, pero yung iba, nung mga nakaraang board exam lang. So hopefully you pay attention. Um, hindi nyo naman kailangan mag-notes kasi pwede naman yung ulitin after. So, yes. Pwede po share so we can start. Ayan. So, this will be Linguistics Part 1 Discussion. Sobrang dami pang topics, actually. Sa literature pa lang ay maloloka na tayo. Pero simulan muna natin maloka sa linguistics. Ayan. Wait lang po. Ayan. Share po natin yung stream. Kalang actually si share ko rin. Hi. Okay. So magsa-start na tayo. Okay. So hopefully makapag-participate kayo and let others know about the live para sila din naman ay mag-benefit din dun sa lecture na to kasi yun nga sobrang importante nung topic. So I want to share with you this part. Uh, nagpa, let's say, quiz or diagnostic test ako kahapon. And as you can see, ito po yung results out of 100 respondents. So, according to statistics, sa sampung items, kung ngayon magtitake ang English majors na sumagot ng test na ito, ay 20% lang yung makakapasa if we have a 75% passing rate. So, hopefully, um, after this, mas maintindihan natin yung mga concepts that are under linguistics uh, na lalabas sa board exam. So, hopefully, this can help you. Start na tayo, ha? Dun sa mga wala pa ngayon, maybe they can just watch a replay. But I hope you can interact in the chat box right here para, ayun, para hindi naman ako mag-isa. Ayoko naman makipag-usap sa sarili ko. Nakakabaliw na nga yung topic, baka pati ako mabaliw din. Anyway, so start tayo with this question. So, coinage is the invention of totally new terms. However, there are few coinages because the words themselves give no clue to their meanings. Which of the following is not coined? Is that Bortal, Kodak, Kleenex, or Xerox? Okay. So, nakikita nyo po ba? I think pwede po nating baguhin yung um, resolution sa FB, ay sa YouTube. Pwede nyo pong i-click yung settings icon and then uh, change it to the highest possible resolution. So, try nyo po yan. Okay, okay. So, sagot po. 
Coinage is the invention of totally new terms. However, there are few coinages because the words themselves give no clue to their meanings. Which of the following is not coined? So, ano po yung sagot nyo? Yeah, I see letter D, letter A. Yes. So, ayan po. Okay. Ayan. Hi. Hello sa inyo. Actually, I wonder kung taga saan kayo. Pero it doesn't matter maybe. So, yung iba na sumagot ng quiz kahapon, you already know the answer for this one. Pero tingnan natin kung ano yung sagot ng iba. Okay? So, A, B, C, or D. Alin daw yung term na hindi coined? Alright. So, that's it. Ang sagot po natin for letter, uh, sorry, number one ay vortal. Okay. Familiar ba kayo dun sa word na vortal? Vortal means vertical portal. Yan. Yan po yung meaning ng portal. Oh, late I see. So, vortal ay vertical portal. Ayan. Yan po yung meaning niya. So, Paano nga ba natin malalaman kung paano na coin or kung paano nagsimula yung different words? So, there is a term we call etymology o yung pinanggalingan ng isang salita, the origin of the word. So, the study of the origin of the word is etymology. At i-discuss natin siya isa-isa because minsan tinatanong ng board exam kung ano ang etymology or paano nabuo yung isang salita. So, let us go on with that. Okay. So, these are the different word formations. Mag-umpisa tayo sa una, which is coinage, as uh, we talked about earlier. So, coinage is the invention of totally new terms. So, ito yung wala naman siyang pinaghiraman, wala siyang pinanggalingan. Naisip lang nila kasi trip lang nila. Ganun, ang coinage. So, invention of totally new terms. So, usually makikita mo siya sa pangalan ng mga products. I think you can rewatch po after your live, after my live pala. So, hopefully you can watch it later. Anyway, so usually on coinage, makikita natin sa brands ng products. So, we have, for example, aspirin, nylon, Vaseline, zipper, granola, Kleenex, Teflon, Xerox, and Google. So, ito yung mga usual na coinages. Wala naman silang pinanggalingan, naisip lang ng mga nagpasimula ng words na ito. Okay? So, the next type of word formation is borrowing. So, uh, from the word itself, borrowing po yung nanghihiram tayo ng salita galing sa other languages. Lalo na kung wala siyang counterpart. Tulad ng, um, there are Filipino words that are already in the English dictionary. They borrowed it from us. Uh, tulad ng adobo, I think. It's in the dictionary kasi wala naman silang counterpart for that. Um, so, let's try to um, go over some words which are borrowed. So, yung croissant from French. Yung dope. Yung dope ay hindi English. It was from Dutch. So, yung lilac, which is from Persian. Yung piano, which is Italian. Kaya meron tayo diba mga mezzo, mezzo forte, mezzo piano. Yan. So, yung piano ay galing sa Italian. Yung pretzel na galing sa German. Sofa from Arabic. Tattoo from Tahitian. And tycoon from Japanese, yogurt from Turkish, and zebra from Bantu. So pag tinanong ng board exam kung saan galing or paano nabuo ang mga salitang ito, ang sagot po natin ay borrowing. So they, we borrowed these terms. So dope ay hindi English. If you say that's dope, that's uh, from a Dutch origin. Okay? So, next po natin, the word formation ay compounding. So, compounding is the joining of two separate words to produce a single form. Ito yung karaniwan natin tinatawag na compound word. So, when you are compounding, you get the full word and the other full word and put them together. So, napaka simple lang, di ba? Like bookcase or doorknob or wallpaper, ball pen, or kung ano pa man ang maisip nyo dyan na compound word, that is compounding. So, just putting words together. Okay? So, next up, we have blending. So, blending is the combination of two separate forms to produce a single new term. So, anong pagkakaiba ng compounding at saka ng blending? If we are compounding, ginagamit lang natin yung dalawang buong salita at pinagkakabit sila. Pero sa blending, isipin nyo na lang, before you put something in the blender, hinahati-hati nyo muna sila. Tapos tsaka nyo sila pagsasamahin dun sa loob ng blender. So, same concept ito pagdating sa blending, sa linguistics. We cut 
the parts, tapos you put them together. Like gasohol, which is gasoline made from alcohol. Gasoline, alcohol. Then smirk, which is smoke and murk. Smog, which is smoke and fog, very familiar. Motel, which is motor and hotel. Telecast, which is television and broadcast. Bit, ang bit ay hindi original word. Ito ay binary and then digit. Binary digit is bit. So, ganun yung blending. Again, yung compounding, two full words, and then you put them together. Pag naman blending, you cut the words first, at saka mo siya pagsasamayin. Para, para mo siyang bineblender. Kinakat mo siya muna sa small pieces, and then you put them together. Okay? Are we clear? Are we following so far? Dahil meron pa tayong iba, the word formations. Can you chat if you're still okay? Kasunod pa tayo? Alright. So, our next form, or kind of word formation i clipping ayan so i think you are very familiar with this pag clipping naman um it is when a word of more than one syllable is reduced to a shorter form so kapag blending kinakat mo siya tapos pinagsasama pag clipping naman kinakat mo lang like facsimile it's just fax or advertisement ad na lang or brochure which is bra or cabriolet which is cab um, condo, which is condominium, diba? and so on. So, yung flu, influenza, perm, which is permanent, permanent curl, perm. So, phone, the telephone, etc. So, kapag clipping, you are just cutting a portion of it. Wala siyang ibang kasama. Alright? So, okay lang po kapag late. So, kapag late daw, minus one sa let. Okay lang ba? <laughs> All right. So let's go on to the next one. Acronyms. All right. So we're already very familiar with acronyms. Katulad ng LET. Licensure Examination for Teachers. All right. So we also have um, CD, which is Compact Disc. LASER is an acronym. It means Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. All right. So napakahaba ng meaning niya. But we just say LASER. Uh, kapag acronym, every letter has um, a meaning. So, ganun tayo. Very familiar naman tayo sa acronym. Pero merong words na hindi natin alam na acronym pala, tulad ng scuba. We sometimes think that scuba is just a word itself, but it's actually a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. So, yan. Yung snafu, which is situation normal, all fouled up. Okay, so ito yung examples ng acronyms. So, next po tayo, no word formation, that is back formation. So, from the word back formation, binabalik mo ng kaunti. It is similar to clipping, pero may konting differences siya, okay? So, back formation is a word of one type, which is usually a noun, is reduced to form a word of another type, which is a verb. Kapag kasi sa clipping, pinapaiksi natin yung salita, pero ganun pa rin siya. Tulad ng Influenza. Influenza is a noun. We shorten it to flu. Pero yung flu na yon na pinaiksing form is still a noun. Okay ba yun? So ganun tayo kapag clipping. Pag back, back formation naman, halimbawa, donation. That is a noun. Pero pag pinaiksi mo siya, ginawa mo siyang donate, that is another word form na. Nagiging verb na siya. Okay? So kapag pinaiksi mo, ganun pa rin yung meaning niya, ganun pa rin yung word form niya, that is clipping. Pero kapag pinaiksi mo siya tapos na-change yung word form niya from, let's say, let's say, a noun to a verb, then it is back formation. Okay ba tayo dun? Are we clear with clipping versus back formation? Can we type down in the chat box kung we are following pa? Okay? Boy pa tayo? <laughs> Boy pa ang brain cells natin? <laughs> Alright. So that is clipping versus back formation. Okay, so next up, we have conversion. Dito naman sa conversion, wala namang nagbago, kundi yung classification lang, or yung type of word it is. So, for example, butter. Butter na tinapay, but you can all, ah, butter na, sorry. Butter na palaman sa tinapay. But you can also use butter as a verb. Okay, like butter the bread. So, from noun... You take the exact word itself and change it into another word form. Like chair. Um, could you please chair the meeting? So chair ay pwedeng mahungahulugan ng upuan. Pero if you take the exact word and use it as a verb, okay? So pwede, na, pwede, siyang, maging, um, uh, pwede siyang maging verb. So that is conversion. Same pa rin, pero iba ang word form. 
okay, or word type. And then next we have, okay, derivation. So, di ba familiar tayo sa inflectional morphemes and derivational morphemes? Are we familiar with that? Can you type down English majors if you remember inflectional versus derivational morphemes? Okay. So, may nakakaalala po ba kung ano po ang inflectional, ano ang derivational? Do we need a recap? Do we not need a recap? Can you let me know if we need a recap of that topic? No? Okay, familiar? Okay. Ako, oh, patay tayo dito. If sa board exam, familiar lahat. Ayan. <laughs> so, it can be very confusing. Ah, familiar to. Familiar to lahat. So, nako, um, medyo hindi tayo safe dun sa familiar lang. Okay, so, inflectional morphemes, ito yung kapag i- kinabit mo siya dun sa root word, parehas pa rin siya ng um, classification. For example, dog plus s, dog plus yung inflectional morpheme na s, alright? So, this is an inflectional morpheme. Dahil, kapag dinagdag mo siya dun sa dog, noun pa rin siya. Dog is a noun. If you add this morpheme or this suffix, it is still a noun. It remains a noun. Okay? Pero kapag derivational, nababago natin yung word classification niya. Halimbawa, um, meaning. Meaning is a noun plus derivational morpheme, morpheme na full. Um... Okay, so magiging siyang meaningful, which is an adverb. Okay, so derivational kapag hindi na siya noun ulit. Or halimbawa, verb siya, tapos dinagdag mo yung suffix na to, hindi na siya verb. So that is a derivational morpheme. Anyway, we only have eight inflectional morphemes. Kasama dito yung s Yung ES, yung apostrophe S, yung ER na nagiging comparative, yung EST na nagiging superlative, ayan, yung D, ED na nagpapa past tense. So, yun yung ating inflectional morphemes. Pero, paano kapag um, teach plus ER? Ayan. So, ang ER ba? Sa teach plus ER ay inflectional or derivational. Because we say ER is an inflectional morpheme. But in teacher, is the ER inflectional or derivational? Can you answer me in the chat box, please? So, derivational ba o inflectional ang ER sa teacher? Answers? So, derivational or inflectional? Pwedeng manghula. Ayan. Hindi ba bagsak sa board exam pag nanghula? <laughs> so, what's your answer? Is it inflectional or derivational? Yung ER. Derivational. Okay. Yes. So, it is indeed derivational. Kasi ang sinasabi natin na inflectional ER, yun yung comparative degree. Limbawa, clear plus ER. So that is clearer, uh, which is comparative. Kapag comparative degree, yun po yung inflectional. Pero dahil yung teach I verb, pag nilagyan ng ER, nagiging noun, that is derivational. Okay. Anyway, balik tayo sa word formation. Alright. So, sa derivation, on a word formation, nag- naglalagay tayo ng affixes. It's either a suffix, a prefix, or an infix. Para mag- magkaroon tayo ng bagong salita. Like lead, nilagyan mo siya ng miss. So, prefix na miss, tapos naging mislead. Yung infixes naman, sometimes these are just um, expressions like sing a bloody poor, or holly blood hallelujah, or absolutely. Yan. So, nilalagyan mo siya ng something dun sa gitna para maging another word. So, pag derivation, we put either a prefix a suffix or an infix. So that is derivation. Ano naman yung eponym? So eponym is a word that comes from the proper name of a place or a person that can be based on both real and fictional people and places. For example, okay, yung boycott na word ay galing sa pangalan ng tao. 
proper name, which is Captain Charles Boycott. So, pag tinanong ng board exam, saan galing yung salitang boycott or paano na form yung word na boycott, that is eponym. Okay? So, Fahrenheit. Paano na buo yung word na Fahrenheit? It is from, it is an eponym. So, word that comes from the proper name of Gabriel Fahrenheit. And so on. We have diesel, galing din sa pangalan ng tao. And um, sandwich, na galing din sa pangalan ng tao. So, are we clear so far? Nakakasunod pa ba tayo sa word formation? Okay, can you type down if we're still okay? And we can still follow? Is everything okay? Okay po ba? Clear po ba? All right. Can't see any chats. So, nandiyan pa po ba kayo? At clear po ba yung topic on word formation so far? All right. Okay. All right. That's good. So, let us try to drill this one. Okay. So, this is word formation or etymology. Itry nyo yung itype sa chat box o kaya sabihin nyo na lang kung paano nabuo ang mga salitang to. So, how are these words formed? First one, radar. Ano po yung radar? Is radar an acronym? Is it an eponym? Is it compounding? Borrowing? Ano po yung radar? Saan po siya nanggaling? Any idea? So radar is... Ano po ba ibig sabihin ng radar? Radar is radio detecting and raging. So, ano po siya? Acronym. That's right. So, radar is an acronym. Next, Kleenex. Kleenex is a proper proper noun and wala siyang origin. Yeah, this one is coinage. All right. Next one, basketball. Two words, compounding. Right? Next, tsunami. Tsunami is a Japanese word, kaya borrowing. All right. So next is sushi, which is also a Japanese word, borrowing. Okay. Spork. So spork is from spoon and pork, fork. Sorry, spoon and fork. We cut spoon, we cut fork, put them together. That is blending. Okay. Next, butter. From noun form to verb form, same lang siya. So that is conversion. All right. Next is sandwich. Saan galing ang salitang sandwich? This is from a proper noun, kaya eponym. All right. So name siya ng um, country from or like place where a person was from. Okay. So next po tayo, misunderstand. There are affixes, kaya this is derivation. All right. Next is dope. This is borrowed from Dutch, so that is borrowing. Next is surveil, which is galing siya sa surveillance, pinaiksi natin siya. Pero nagbago yung word type niya, kaya siya ay back formation. Alright? So next is let. Licensure examination for teachers. Sige, mag-type lang kayo dyan. Let I acronym. Okay, next is fridge. Fridge. So, kinot mo siya galing sa mas malaking word, pero noun pa rin siya at same pa rin ang meaning, kaya that is clipping. Alright. So, next is vortal. Ito yung kanina. Vortal is vertical plus portal. Kinot natin yung vertical, kinot ang portal, kaya pinagsama mo siya, blending. And Google, from noun to verb. Anong sagot yun dito? Google. Google, from noun to verb, what's your answer? Is it acronym? Is it back formation, borrowing, derivation? What is Google in this case? All right. Blending. Okay. So in this case, Google is a conversion. So kanina sabi natin, yung Google itself was coined. It's a coined word. Meron siyang, uh, wala naman siyang pinanggalingan. So it's just, it's just a coined word. Pero... Yung Google na from noun form, kinuha mo siya eksakto, na ginawa mo siyang verb, like, Google it. You don't know it, Google it. That is a conversion. So, depende kung ano, kung ano ang binigay sa inyo. So, that is conversion. 
And next is absolutely. Meron tayong nilagay sa gitna. Prefix, suffix, infix ay derivation. Okay ba tayo? Are we still following? So, okay pa ba? I hope that everything is still clear. Okay. So, move on na tayo. Yan. How many morphemes are in transportation? How many morphemes are in transportation? Alam na to ng madlang people. Anong sagot po natin? A, B, C, or D? All right. So, ano ang um, ilang morphemes ang nasa transportation? One, two, three, or four? Sagot? Okay. How do we count morphemes ulit? All right. Two? Okay. So, the answer is B. All right. It's two. Why? Meron tayong transport. That is a root word. And then Asian. So, meron tayong dalawa. Isang root word at isang suffix. So, we have transportation. Okay. So, clear ba tayo? All right. Okay, so go tayo sa next one. Which of the following has a glottal segment? Wala po ito dun sa quiz kahapon, but let us see if you know. Which of the following words has a glottal segment? Alright. So, ano pong sagot nyo? Which of the following has a glottal segment? Letter B, how about the others? Ano po ang sagot nyo dito? Alright. Ang sagot po natin ay letter B, which is hot. Okay. So, tatandaan po natin, isa lang po yung ating glottal sound. Pag glottal, yung tanong ng board exam, maghanap na kayo dyan ng letter H. Okay? So, pag ang tanong, which of the following word begins with a glottal sound, maghanap kayo ng word na nagsistart sa letter H. Which of the following has a glottal segment? Just find a word with a H sound on it. Alright? Kapag naman ang tanong ng word exam, which of the following has a palatal sound, maghanap kayo ng letter J. So, ang palatal sound natin ay letter J, at ang glottal sound natin ay letter H. So, para mabilis, yun lang yung tatandaan nyo sa glottal H, palatal J. Okay? So, the, alright? So, yun lang po yung hahanapin natin. Um, next, let us proceed to our next question. All right. Which method emphasizes isolated word lists and thorough examination of its grammar? Which method emphasizes isolated word lists and thorough examination of its grammar? Is it Suggestopedia, TPR, GTM, or TBLT? Which method emphasizes isolated word lists and thorough examination of its grammar? Suggestopedia, TPR, GTM, TBLT. Ano po ang sagot ng English majors? Letter C, GTM. Okay. Alright, so that is correct. Ang sagot po natin dito ay letter C. Okay. GTM. Alright. Ano ba tong mga GTM na to? Ano ba tong mga letters na to? So... These are um, methods of instruction sa linguistics or sa second language. Uh, methods of language learning, uh, learning methods and approaches ng language. So let us discuss all of them. Let's start tayo sa grammar translation method or GTM. So sa GTM, the emphasis is on grammar and translation. Ginagamit natin yung mother tongue and not into speaking. So, ang, ginagaw ang ginagawa po natin sa grammar translation method, binibigyan mo sila, for example, ng poetry. Tapos translate nila ito sa language nila. Or dun sa uh, language pala that they are learning. So, sabihin mo sa kanila, English teacher ka, ha? pero sasabihin mo, mga bata, i-translate nyo ang poetry na ito to English. So, your mode of instruction, your method of instruction, your language of instruction is your mother tongue. Mother tongue yung ipinangtuturo mo sa kanila. That's grammar translation. Pero, magta-translate naman sila into the second language, which is English. Pero karamihan po sa grammar translation method, hindi nila ginagamit yung English para makipag-usap. Ginagamit nila yon para masagutan yung activity nila, which is oftenly to translate. 
So yun po ang grammar translation method. Usually, um, grammar structure tayo dito, yun yung ating focus. So very particular siya sa grammar and translation. So GTM, okay? And next naman ay direct method or natural method. By the word itself, direct. Ang ginagamit mo dito, puro English lang. Hindi mo gagamitin yung Tagalog sa pagtuturo or yung mother tongue nila in instruction. You're going to use L2 or the language you're trying to learn. So, no use of own language sa direct method. Kasi direct nga eh, di ba? So, drills in listening and speaking, imitation, no memorization. Hindi mo pinapamemorize na ito yung sasabihin mo. So, it is called natural method because you're trying to make them learn the language in a natural way by exposing them into the language. So, hindi mo i-explain um, na ganito dapat yung sasabihin mo kapag uh, magte-thank you ka. Arigato gozaimasu, ganyan. No, you don't do that. You just say arigato gozaimasu and they learn from you through observation. That is direct method. Okay? Hindi mo rin ina-explain into their own language. Basta direct method, they only observe you. They speak, you speak naturally. You don't slow down for them. Um, so, ito talaga yung natural method of learning. They get exposed to the language. Alright? Hindi sila pwedeng, halimbawa, they are learning English, magtatagalog sila, no. Or magtatagalog ka for them, no. So, they have to learn. Para kang, um, halimbawa, Tagalog ka, tas nilagay ka sa Visayas. Pupunta ka ng Visayas, you learn the language, hindi nila explain sa'yo, basta maririnig mo na lang. Direct method. Clear ba tayo doon? Sa direct method, are we clear? Magulo ba? So, okay ba tayo? Direct method? English majors? Okay? Clear? Alright. So, next tayo. Next method ay audiolingual method. So, so audiolingual method, ang tatandaan nyo ay repeat after me. So, para siyang parroting or army method. Di ba sa army may sinasabi yung commandant, tapos gagayahin siya ng iba. Like, left, right, left, right. And the others would say, left, right, left, right. So, meron kasing mimicry pagdating sa ALM or audiolingual method. Gaya lang sila ng gaya. So, it says it's heavily oriented towards oral and oral exercises. So you listen and then you copy. That's why it's called mimem. So talagang minimimik lang nila kung anong sinasabi. And then drills, paulit-ulit para hanggang matandaan nila. Okay? Like, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And then the kids would go, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And then paulit-ulit kayo hanggang sa memorize na ng kids yon. So that is audiolingual method. Drilling, mimicry, army method. Mimem. Okay? So, next po ay Community or Collaborative Language Learning or CLL. Okay. So, Community or Collaborative Language Learning. So, teachers are counselors and paraphrasers. So, collaborative nga. Alibaw may sinabi sa student, oh, ipaparaphrase mo. Oh, you mean you want a cup of coffee, right? So, uulitin mo yung sinasabi niya, uh, pero i-correct mo. So, teachers are counselors, paraphrasers. And then, group dynamics. Very collaborative nga ito, kaya nga siya CLL, collaborative method. You ask in language one, and then they answer you in language two. Um, like, ano yung sasabihin natin sa umaga? Then they would say, good morning. Okay, so you are collaborating to make them learn. So, ano naman ang negative effect ng... Um, CLL or Community La Language Learning. Ang negative effect nito ay yung tinatawag nating Ringelman effect. Ano ba yung Ringelman effect? Yun yung kapag ginroup mo sila, hindi nag-cooperate lahat. So yung individual performance nila ay bumababa dahil nagiging dependent sila sa iba. Tanas nyo ba to Buhat. <laughs> so binubuhat sila ng iba nilang members. Kaya ang negative effect ng community language learning ay Ringelman effect. Hindi sila nag-grow individually kasi umaasa sila sa iba or sa groupmates nila. So that is CLL. Okay? So pag CLL, um, collaborative, teacher paraphraser, Ringelman effect. Okay? So next is Suggestopedia. Ito favorite din ng let ang Suggestopedia. 
learning achieves its maximum success when the mind is relaxed. So, ang focus ng suggestopedia ay yung mood, yung emotions ng ating learners. So, kapag suggestopedia, gusto natin matanggal yung distractions nila. So, meron kayong dalawang way to achieve that. Kasi ang gusto natin sa suggestopedia ay make them feel safe as if they are in the womb. So, very relaxed sila, very taken care of. So, meron tayong two ways. It is desuggestion. Kapag desuggestion, tinatanggal mo yung affective filter. Um, halimbawa, maingay. Maingay yung paligid, kaya hindi sila natututo. Ang gagawin mo sa desuggestion, papatahimikin mo yung paligid. So, to prepare them for learning. So, that is desuggestion. Tatanggalin mo kung ano yung nagpapadistract. Tatanggalin mo kung ano yung nagiging filter for their learning. The suggestion. Ang suggestion method naman, magdadagdag ka naman ng something to make them concentrate or to make them motivated to learn. Tulad ng music. Diba? Sabi nila kapag nakikinig ka raw ng classical music, magiging matalino ka daw. Kasi mas madig, magiging madali daw sa'yo na mag-memorize. So yun daw yung effect ng music. So that is suggestion method. Dinadagdagan mo sila ng something that would make them concentrate. The suggestion, tinatanggal mo yung distraction. Suggestion, naglalagay ka ng pangpa-focus. Okay, that is suggestopedia. All of that are concerned with their emotions and readiness. Okay po ba? All right. So, so, tandaan po natin to because this one is very important. Uh, next po ay yung silent way. Okay. So, sa so silent way, we use color rods or cushioner rods. The purpose is to develop self-awareness and discovery. We use physical objects and discovery learning. So, sa so silent way, by the word itself, wala ka masyadong talk. Um, hindi ka masyadong madaldal as a teacher. Hinahayaan mo lang sila na ma-discover kung paano gawin yung isang bagay or how to speak a language or how to read something by the use of physical objects. So these kusner rods, ganito po yung itsura niya. Hold on. Alright. So bawat isang rod um, symbolizes or represents a certain sound. So as a teacher, pagsasamasabayin mo yung iba-ibang rod na may iba-ibang sound para makabuo sila ng sentence. Hindi mo sasabihin sa kanila that this is the sound of each of them. You just let them discover it by themselves, by themselves using physical objects. So that is the silent way. Color rods or kusuner rods, self-awareness, discovery method, physical objects. Yun po yung tatandaan natin sa silent way. Waka talk. <laughs> Hindi ka po magsasalita masyado. Basta... You let the objects talk for you. All right? So next is TPR or total physical response. So total physical response po, uh, children listen a lot and then they respond physically. So yung instructor or yung teacher, yung director, and students are actors. Okay, everyone stand up. All right? So lahat sila tatayo. They don't say anything. They just listen to you. And then, um, clap your hands. So, all right. Very kinesthetic siya. And it focus on, uh, focuses on movement. So, that is TPR or to total physical response. Okay. So, next po natin ay natural approach. Uh, iba po yung natural method at natural approach. Okay. Pag natural method, equivalent siya sa direct method. Ano ulit yung direct method? Ito yung ini-immerse mo lang sila. They use the second language only, no use of first language. So natural approach naman is um, hinahayaan mo muna sila na maging ready. Kasi sa suggestopedia, you are doing it eh. Ini-initiate mo yung readiness nila. Sa natural approach naman, meron tayong tinatawag na silent period. Naghihintay ka na maging ready yung students mo to speak. So yun yung natural approach. Okay, wait ka lang hanggang ready silang magsalita. Natural approach, okay? Clear ba tayo? Difference between natural method and natural approach. Pag natural method, second language only, um, and then they are immersing to the actual language. And then pag dating naman sa natural approach, you wait until they're ready. Okay? Sana all naghihintay. Okay, so next, let's go on to SLP or situational language teaching. It is a very oral approach. So it says English teaching in terms of providing vocabularies and sentence patterns with their frequent situations through learning materials. So it says it's accurate pronunciation and grammar to respond quickly and mistakes are banned. 
bakit banned ang mistakes sa SLT? Kasi itinuturo mo sa kanila kung ano ang eksaktong dapat sabihin for each situation. For example, um, uh, Good morning, ma'am. This is Kim from the HR department. How may I help you? So yun eksakto, meron silang spiel, meron silang sasabihin mismo at hindi sila pwedeng magkamali doon. You teach them na sa ganitong situation, you should say you're welcome. Sa ganitong situation, you should say, um, magandang araw po, binibining Reyes, like that. And everybody says the same thing. Mistakes are banned. So you teach them in this situation, ito yung eksakto mong sasabihin. Kaya oral approach. You make them memorize what needs to be said. Okay? So that is SLT. And then next po ay PBLT. So kung sa situation-based or SLT, binibigay mo sa kanila what to say in an exact situation. Sa TBLT naman, you give them a task to do. For example, you need to write a letter, you need to make a reservation, you need to plan a trip, you need to collaborate to design something. So they need to accomplish a task to learn the language. So yun lang po, ang TBLT, you just need to accomplish a task. Okay? All right. So okay ba tayo dun sa learning methods and approaches to language or learning Um, yeah, language teaching methods and approaches. Okay ba tayo? Are we clear? Naintindihan po ba natin? Do you have questions? Okay pa? Kaya pa? <laughs> Alright, papasa ba? So, LPT na ba kayo sa September 2023? I wonder. Okay, so hopefully, um, magiging LPT po ang English majors at magtatop. Hindi lang basta LPT. We are aiming for very high ratings. Kasi po, as I said, I will give you everything that I know and I will be together with you until September. Okay? So, next. All right. Kusine rods. You're using the rods to teach. No speaking. Silent way. Mim mem. Mim mem. Copying. Mimicry. ALM. Okay? Army method. Gaya gaya lang den. ALM. All right. Grammar focused. Sabay kayo sa chat box, all right? Grammar focused, GTM. All right. Next, physical objects. Physical objects lang. Ikaw hindi ka magsasalita. They will speak for you silent way. Okay. Movements. So, children, stand up. Children, close the door. Children, clap your hands. That is TPR, or total physical response. Emotions. So, you get them ready to learn. That is suggestopedia. Okay. Reserving a hotel. You have a task. You have to reserve a hotel to learn the language. That is TBLT. All right. So next is mother tongue. Mother tongue lang yung gagamitin mo. Very straightforward. So that is direct, direct approach or direct method. Okay. Next is silent period. You just wait until they're ready. Very natural ang approach na ito. That is the natural approach. Okay. Next is oral approach. Oral approach. Meron lang. Exactong sa sabihin, that is SLT. Okay? Mistakes are banned. Kasi nga, meron kang exactong sa sabihin, that is also SLT. Alright? So next, discovery learning. So, hindi, hindi ko sasabihin sa'yo kung anong gagawin mo. Bahala ka dyan matuto kung paano mo siya babasahin. But I provided the physical materials. That is silent way. Okay? Next, adding music. So, para maging ready ka, bibigyan kita ng music. So, this is my suggestion for you. Maglagay ka ng music. That is Suggestopedia. Okay. Next is Ringelman Effect. Dahil sobrang dami nila, hindi na sila natututo lahat kasi binubuhat sila ng isa lang. That is C, kasi nga, Collaborative Community, CLL. Okay. And then, last one, the teachers are the directors, students are the actors. Again, um, open the door, uh, open the windows, close the curtains. That is TPR, or Total Physical Response. So, hopefully, okay po tayo sa language teaching methods and approaches. Very important. Kung hindi po natin nasabayan, kung hindi po natin masyadong nagets, pwede po natin ulitin pagkatapos po ng live. Okay? So, that is it. And next question. So, which approach involves a lot of repetition of the second language grammatical forms, especially those that are different from the learner's first language? All right. Tingnan mabuti ang clue words. So this is an actual board exam question. 
which approach involves a lot of repetition of the second language grammatical forms, especially those that are different from the learner's first language. Okay, which one is it? All right. Ano ba ang focus natin? Yung bang repetition or yung grammatical forms? Kaya. Sa tingin nyo, which is our clue word for this one? So our answer is ALM. ALM po. Bakit? Sabi, a lot of repetition. It is very repetition focused. Kaya audiolingual method po ito. MIM, MIM, Army method. Okay? So next which principle does not belong to direct approach in language teaching? Look at the choices very carefully. It emphasizes natural dialogue in the second language. It is a method based on immersion. It never uses the first language. It takes advantage of the kinesthetic memory. So which one is it? A, B, C, or D? Which principle does not belong to direct approach in language teaching? Which one is it? Emphasizes natural dialogue. Method based on immersion, never uses first language, takes advantage of the kinesthetic memory. Which one is the answer for this question? Alin po? A, B, C, or D? Sagut po. Which one is it? Okay. Ano ba ang direct approach? Okay. Letter D. All right, that's good. So, ang hindi po kasama ay letter D. Why? What is letter D? What kind of approach is letter D? It takes advantage of the kinesthetic memory. That is what? Is it GTM? Is it TBLT? Is it CLL? Is it DM? Is it, um, what is it? TPR. Okay, that's right. So, pag kinesthetic, gumagalo tayo, that is TPR. Total physical response. Okay, that's different. TBR. Very good. So next, the transcription T-A-I, capital I-P, represents the word tap, tape, tip, type. The transcription T-A, capital I-P, represents the word tap, tape, tip, type. Which is it? So, ano po ang sagot natin dito? Okay, our answer for this one is type. Bakit po type? First of all, makikita po natin, we have a diphthong eh, di ba? A, I, I po yun. So, alin ba dito yung may diphthong sound? Tap, it's a very short sound. Tape, ape. So, pag ganun po, yun po yung parang letter E na baliktad na three and then I. Yun po yung A, okay? And then ip. So, pa short sound, so isang ano lang yan, isang IPA symbol. Ipe. This is a diphthong AI. So letter D. Okay. So paki review po yung IPA. I'm not going to go through it one by one because meron naman po tayong list of IPA symbols. You can just memorize them by yourself or um, familiarize yourself with them. So next is okay. And dami na dito. I'm very surprised. <laughs> so. Which concept is not a characteristic of academic language proficiency? Again, which concept is not a characteristic of academic language proficiency? So, ang hinahanap po natin, hindi academic. So, let's go through the choices one by one. Letter A, it includes knowledge of the less frequent vocabulary of the target language, as well as the ability to interpret and produce increasingly complex written language. Ano ba ang academic language? Hindi ba ito yung complex? Hindi ba ito yung hindi common? Yun yung academic language, di ba? So, next. Immigrant students typically require at least five years to attain expectations in second language literacy, literacy skills. So, yun na nga, students eh. So, academic din yun. Next. Frequent writing across genres is also crucial in developing academic writing skills. So, academic writing din siya. Pero sa D, ginamit nila yung academic language just to confuse you. Pero, look at it. Academic language is primarily found in everyday conversation. Do we use academic language in everyday conversation? We don't, di ba? Sinasabi mo ba sa kanila, ano ba ang um, uh, jargon for education like pedagogy diba um 
sinasabi mo ba sa kausap mo, uh, I am actually making the pedagogical framework for my next lesson. Hindi mo naman sinasabing ganun, di ba? Sinasabi mo lang, ah, gumagawa ako ng, pla- ng lesson plan. Yung ano, yung um, I'm writing notes for my next lesson. So, you don't use academic language in everyday conversation. Kaya po, ang answer for this one ay letter D. So, basahin po natin mabuti yung bawat tanong. Tingnan nyo po mabuti kung ano yung clue word tulad dito, academic. So, dahil lang sa ginamit siya sa choices, huwag nyo yun agad piliin as the right answer. You have to, tulad na to, academic language is primarily found in everyday conversation. It's yes. So, frequent, less crucial quote. So, uh, so for number, uh, letter D, sinabi dun, everyday conversation. So, yun yung total opposite ng academic language. Okay ba tayo? So, that is how we answer this question. Sobrang dami pong nagkambali dito. Kaya, ganun po tayo. Be very careful when you select your answers. And next is, which sentence is not empathic? Or not emphatic? Days, weeks, and years may pass before they are recognized. This has happened more than once. Newsletters were used by them to spread the news. Edison took further steps to develop modern films. Okay. Ah, I quote you. Ah, okay. Sir Melvin method. That's right. Okay, tama. So, yes. Ano pong sagot? Letter C. Okay. So, newsletters were used by them to spread the news. Bakit hindi siya emphatic? So, number one kasi, meron tayong increasing na level of intensity. Days, weeks, years. Emphatic siya kasi parang tumatagal ng tumatagal, di ba? So, dun sa second... This has happened more than once. It's mo sobra ka na eh. <laughs> diba? So it is an emphatic way of saying it too. Sa D naman, Edison took further steps. So parang meron din siyang increasing level of inten- intensity. Tapos sa C, it is very casual. Also, a by phrase na ginagamit sa passive tense or a passive form ay usually nakakababa ng pagiging emphatic ng sentence. So kung hindi kayo sure, Masyado sa kung alin yung hindi emphatic bukod sa emotional impact nito or dun sa intensity, you can just select a passive form. So, pwedeng ganun. Kung wala lang kayong idea. Okay? So, next is, which sentence is punctuated correctly? So, punctuation po tayo. In that college, you have to take the following courses. So, bilisan na lang natin to. If you are stating a list, kailangan nyo po ng colon. Diba? So, following courses, colon, four years of English, three years of math, three years of social studies. Kailangan ba yung colon before end? Or, ah, yung, sorry, comma, before end. Or yung tinatawag nating Oxford comma. Kailangan ba siya? I wonder what the English major's opinions are. Kailangan ba yung Oxford comma? Is it important in your opinion? Yung halimbawa, red, green, comma, and blue. Or pwede bang wala na lang yung comma? Red, green, and blue. Wala na yung comma before end. So, yes or no lang. Is the Oxford comma necessary? Chat box, please. Yes or no? Is the Oxford comma necessary? Yes or no? No idea? No? Yes? Okay. All right. Okay. Lots of light colors. All right. Let's look at it this way. Um, kunin mo yung shirt ko, yung t-shirt ko, red, green, and blue. So, pag sinabi mong red, green, and blue, pwedeng yung red, yung green, at yung blue. Pero kapag red, comma, green and blue, it could be vague. Kasi, yung green and blue ba ay mixture ng green and blue or green at saka blue? So, the purpose of the Oxford comma is para paghiwalayin sila. So, um, sorry, peanut butter, comma, jelly. Peanut butter at saka jelly. So, pag Peanut butter, comma, and jelly. Peanut butter at saka jelly. Pag 
peanut butter and jelly. So parang peanut butter and jelly na magkasama, di ba? So that is the purpose ng Oxford comma po. Para paghiwalayan yung bawat item. So ang purpose niya talaga is to clarify things and to avoid ambiguity. Alright? So yun po siya. So kailangan ba siya? Preferably meron po. Ayun. So next is this one. Okay, so answer to this, by the way, is letter A. And then, all right. Dito din po madaming nagkamali. I am very surprised. So, which is the best antonym for vicious? Vicious po yung mga villains. Vicious yung mga cruel, dangerous people or characters. Yun, vicious criminals. Vicious antagonists. So, yun po yung vicious. And the antonym or the opposite word of dangerous and cruel is, of course, gentle. Okay, so yun po yung sagot. Antonym of vicious is gentle. And this. How many phonemes are there in the English language? Without Googling, what is your answer? How many phonemes are there in the English language? 29, 36, 44, 42. Ilan po yung phonemes ng English? Any answers? Chat box, please. So, ilan yung phonemes natin? Tinatanong to sa board exam. So, how many phonemes are there in the English language? Okay. C, A. Okay. The correct answer is letter C. Meron po tayong 44 phonemes sa English language. Kasama po dito yung 19 consonants. We have... um. Diphthongs, we have digraphs, digraphs yung halibaw, th, tapos isang sound lang siya. Dalawang consonant sound, consonant digraph ay yung pinagsamang consonant na nakakaproduce ng isang sound. Like t and h, th, that is a consonant digraph. Th, th, that is also a consonant digraph. So kasama yun dun sa bilang ng ating phonemes sa English language. Okay. So, I think that would be it for the part one of our linguistics. Meron ba kayong natutunan? <laughs> so, meron bang new info at least today? Or meron bang na-clarify na points? Or alam nyo na ba kung bakit ganun yung score nyo dun sa Google Form? Did we learn something today, English majors? Meron ba tayong additional input that would be helpful for the board exam? So, hopefully meron. Okay, that's good. So, i-replay nyo lang po yung video if ever you need to refresh your memory, especially doon sa mga GTM, ALM na yan kasi lagi yan nasa board exam. Okay? Pati yung um, etymology, yung mga acronym, ganyan, lagi din yung nasa board exam. So, please, um, familiarize yourself, not familiarize, um, master these concepts. Okay? So, next. Uh, the Little Prince is my favorite book. Actually, ito. The Little Prince. Kaya makikita niyo siya dun sa mga DP ko. It's a very nice book. So, nakita ko dito ang line is, It is the time you have wasted for your rose that makes your rose so important. Um, mas nanam namin niyo yung success ng pagiging LPT niyo. Kung talagang pinaghirapan niyo yan, kung talagang pinagbigyan niyo ng oras niyo at lahat ng klaseng effort niyo yung pagre-review para sa board exam. It is what is going to make it more um, important for you. It is what is going to make your success sweeter. Spend all the time that you can dahil kakaunti lang po yung hanggang September. You might feel like it's a long way from now, but it's not. Kaya ang gusto ko po, hindi lang po kayo pumasa, I want you to get higher scores than mine. Please. <laughs> so, yun po yung sinasabi ko. Hindi ako naging top-notcher, but because I'm giving you everything I know, at uh, sasamahan ko talaga kayo hanggang September, hopefully po, meron sa inyong magkaroon ng mas mataas na score kesa sa akin. Okay, that is your challenge. And um, with that, I think I would have to say goodbye. Pero salamat po la sa inyo lahat for joining me here. And para po dun sa mga hindi po nakapag-join today, hopefully we can share the live with them. I will see you on our next live at yun. Also with the LPTs at the end of your name. So, yun po. Bago sana magtapos ang taon, ay LPT po ang English majors. Sana po nakatulong po ako sa inyo at sana hindi po ako magulo kasi first time ko pong nag-live. <laughs> so, I was hoping na hindi po sana ako 
magulo, mag-explain. Sana po naintindihan niyo po. Yun po. So, thank you so much and enjoy your evening po. Thank you. Goodbye. Hintayin na lang po natin siya. Bye-bye po.